Now, we all know you love chicken. I do. But what we're going to do is a way that Daddy used to eat it in Paris, OK? Now, I'm going to hold that up, OK? Yeah. Season inside, please. Why is it yellow? Because it's a corn-fed chicken. Obviously, it eats corn, and if you eat lots of corn... Turn yellow. Turn yellow. Now, what are those? Chickpeas. Chickpeas, yeah. Have a little taste. Nice? Yeah. We're going to make them taste even better. Salt, pepper in there as well, please. Now... Chilies. Can you hear that noise? What does that mean? The seeds have come out. Try and take off the tops. And we're going to add the chilies to the chickpeas. In. And then zest the lemon in there, please. You love your zest. I love my zest. You're absolutely right. A little glug of olive oil. Come on, Holes. Don't worry about your nails now. Come on, baby. You can do it. Now, time. You peel off all those wonderful little buds. See? So, as we stuff the chicken with the fresh thyme, the chickpeas become sort of fat and juicy from all that wonderful flavour. Chickpea stuffing done. Next, we're going to make the herb butter to flavour the skin. Now, what's that? Tarragon. What is? Mmm. Slightly vinegary? Yeah? Yeah. A little bit aniseedy? Yeah. So, imagine that flavour going into the chicken. That's going to be delicious. Now, nice soft butter in with the tarragon. Mm. Mm. Isn't that lovely? Yeah. Now, I want you gently to put your fingers through there and just so we can get that butter under there. But I need those small, beautiful little hands. Down. Ew. What's wrong? <laughs> it's yucky. Come on, holes. Nice. Well done. I want you to get a nice handful of butter. <laughs> Lift your hand up and push under. Good. Now, see that there? Yeah. You push it all the way down there and you let that slide. And that's how you get all that wonderful, yeah, butter running down. And the breasts stay nice and moist. And I'd like you, yeah, to put all those chickpeas in there. Nice. Your hands have never been so dirty, have they? No. Here we go. Good. And push it down. <laughs> Come on. OK. Now, place my lemon in there. Right? Take your garlic. Shall I wash my hands? No. Not yet. We lay the garlic onto the tray. Now, onto the garlic. Salt. Pepper. That keeps the skin nice and crispy. And then I'm just going to drizzle some olive oil. That will stop the butter from burning. And look at that. Please open the door. Thank you, my darling. In she goes. <laughs> Beautiful. Good job. Thank you. Really good. Nice to see Holly get her hands dirty, right? I think we can all agree. Huh? <laughs> For dessert, it's an incredible but easy hazelnut meringue tower guaranteed to wow your mates. Start with the basic meringue. Separate four egg whites and whisk. Gradually add caster sugar. until the mix forms stiff, glossy peaks. Gently fold in ground and chopped hazelnuts. A trick we use in the restaurants is to use the mix to stick baking sheets down, which makes them easy to spread and stops the sheets blowing around. Top your meringues with more finely chopped hazelnuts and bake for 25 minutes. And the trick to stop them cracking is to turn the oven off and let them cool inside. For the filling, melt dark chocolate in a bowl over simmering water and slightly cool. Whip the cream until it forms soft peaks and gently fold in three quarters of the melted chocolate until combined. Build your tower with alternate layers of chocolate cream and meringue. Finally, drizzle over the remaining melted chocolate to decorate. A simple yet luxurious dessert your friends will love, but be warned, they'll all want second helpings. The chicken's in the oven and the dessert's sorted. Now for a big, easy green salad. So, let's start off with one nice tablespoon Dijon. Say Dijon. 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 A nice little squeeze of honey. 
to love honey. Good. A little splash of aged balsamic. Yeah, no, this is your favourite, this one, isn't it? Mm. I just like the... It has a nice sweetness, but then it has a bitterness to it, too. Mm -hmm. Nice. Next to virgin olive oil. Why do we have to use a whisk, not just a spoon? The purpose of using a whisk is so it can emulsify. But more importantly, you're bringing all the ingredients together. Taste? Mmm. It's so yummy. That is delicious, isn't it? A good tip to loosen any vinaigrette and give it a lighter taste is to add a spot of water. Now, the juice of a lemon. Squeeze the lemon in. Nice. Now, use some butter lettuce. Start placing the salad around the outside. This one is a Lolo Rosso. OK. So we'll put that one on the inside. We're sort of making a nice flower. And you put your heart in there. Oh, so, it's like a flower. That's exactly what I'm trying to do. A nice, beautiful flower. Now, from there, you know, crisscross your avocado. What does crisscrossing do instead of just slicing down? I'll show you now. You put your spoon in there and look. That's so cool. Got all these nice little bits. I want you to sprinkle those little bits in here. I'm telling you, that first dinner you cook for your boyfriend is going to be extraordinary. Yeah. That romantic dinner, the roast chicken, the beautiful salad, OK? Yeah. To the way your father taught you. And how nice will that be? All three of us sat down eating at the same time. Very nice. Are you going to do that with Megan? All of you. All of you. And I'd grab the chicken. OK. Now, look at this beauty. <gasps> that looks amazing. Doesn't it? Right, so, a little bit of the salad. Do you want to drizzle that? Drip, drip, drip. Nice. What I'm going to do now is squeeze all that garlic down. See how soft mm. and beautiful it is? It smells amazing. The lemon that we stuffed inside the chicken, roasted. What we do now is just squeeze all that through. Look at that nice <laughs> garlic puree. I'm going to tip all my chickpeas mm. in there. From there, some of your vinegar in. Now you crush them. And because they're still nice and hot, they absorb all that wonderful garlic and lemon puree, the rich, delicious, creamy vinaigrette, the chilies. I can guarantee you, young lady, that they are the best, the finest, the most delicious chickpeas you've ever tasted. Go on, then. Yummy. <laughs> right. In. Now, a little drizzle. Extra virgin olive oil over them. Beautifully done. Mm. On. Chickpeas. And that is a roast chicken fit for a king, darling. This looks really yummy. <laughs> this is my ultimate home cooked French dinner. First job, my chicken fricassee. Tilly, would you mind helping Daddy with the. Chicken fricassee, please. We're going to start off with browning all the chicken off nicely. Pan on. Get that nice and hot. What I want you to do for me first is to season the chicken with salt and pepper, please. Thank you. So that's on one side. Then we turn the chicken over. So we season it on the other side. Salt, good girl, and pepper. Nice. Now, this is almost like a chicken stew. Mm -hmm. OK. What's that there? Mm, thyme. Thyme. Good girl. That What's that one. one there? That one's rosemary. That's right. Rosemary. And because this is quite a rustic French dish, we don't need to chop everything. So you get the garlic and you just bash it like that. Now smell. Mmm. Ooh. Right. So that's nice and hot. Put a tablespoon of olive oil in there, a couple of lugs. One, two, good girl. Put the that's chicken in. Spit. And you lay away. You got that nice and brown. You're getting good at this. You are. Skin side down. So we get the colour on the skin. Now, I just want you to cut the mushrooms in half for Daddy, please. 
Mm -hmm. Okay, these are chestnut mushrooms. There are these? lots of different types of mushrooms, aren't there? There are lots and lots of different types of mushrooms. Which yeah. one's your favourite? One of my favourites is the Giro mushroom. I like mushrooms that are a bit bigger than this. And um, some dinners with Mum, we cut out the middle, put pesto and cheese in it, and then we bake them. Ah, oh, oh. so I want you to sprinkle the pancetta over the chicken, please. Good girl. Nice. Put the mushrooms in. Not yet, because I'm going to get some colour on the chicken first. OK. And as that pancetta starts to cook down, it puts a really nice flavour on the chicken. Yeah. So we're sort of sauteing everything, OK? Right, garlic in, please. Good girl. Just throw them in. And then we need to sprinkle the mushrooms on top of that. Good girl. And then there's the rosemary. OK, yeah. you get your fingers like that and you pull it down. You take it all off. Hold it. Put it down. Good girl. So now you've got the nice little rosemary sprigs. I want you to do the same with the thyme. Now, the thyme flower is a little bit smaller. What different flavours do they give? So the thyme is a little bit sweeter, OK? And the rosemary, a little bit more savoury. Which ones do you like? I like them both, because they both give a nice flavour. Don't they? So, bay leaf in. I'd like you to put that rosemary and, and thyme in there, please. Lovely. Sprinkle it over. Right. I'd like you to stand back now because we're going to flambe this. I do not want to get those little slippers caught on fire. What are their names? Rumpel and Judith. Judith. Nice. OK, great. Ready? Yeah. In with the brandy. And then just tilt the pan gently. Whoa. Whoa. How cool is, is that? It's magical. Beautiful. A bit like a cauldron. All the cognac has been so there's no raw alcohol anywhere. So we've got a really nice, deep, rich flavour. I'm going to add my chicken stock. You know, Rumpel likes that. Not my slipper, Rumpel. Rumpel the dog. Ah, Rumpel the dog. Well, he likes chicken stock. Yes, when he's a good boy, he gets, um, he gets it in his, um, with his biscuit. It's gone in, like, wow, really quickly. Simmer and reduce the stock for around 10 minutes. Now, we're going to cook the most amazing potatoes. Soda potatoes are really simple to make and absolutely delicious. Start by slicing the potatoes into finger width pieces. Then parboil them for five to six minutes. When you cook something like rosemary or thyme or mm -hmm. basil, does it slowly let off the flavour into the hot or...? Very much so. In a hot pan, add a tablespoon of goose fat and saute the potatoes until they turn golden. And add in shallots, garlic, rosemary and thyme. That goes in, over top. And that goose fat now is starting to fry the potatoes. You just leave that sat there. To complete my ultimate French dinner, my version of a classic, a glorious lavender creme caramel for dessert. The first job is the lavender sugar. You can buy this ready-made or simply add dried edible sprigs of lavender to cast the sugar and store. You can also try this trick with vanilla pods and cinnamon to bring new subtle flavours to sweets and baking. For the creme caramel, melt plain caster sugar until it turns dark golden. Pour into ramekins, sprinkle with lavender flowers and cool. Now, to make a simple custard, gently heat whole milk in a pan until steaming. Meanwhile, whisk together egg, vanilla seeds and lavender sugar until golden and fluffy. Then gradually pour the hot milk into the mix, whisking continuously until the custard is smooth and creamy. To set, cook in a water bath or bain-marie. A good tip is to line a roasting tin with a cloth to stop the ramekins jiggling around. Pour your custard, then boiling water around the ramekins until halfway up the sides. Then cook in a preheated oven for around 30 minutes until set. Cool in the fridge. Then when you're ready to serve, dip the ramekins in hot water to loosen the creme caramel. Et voilà, lavender creme caramel. Look at that chicken now. So I'm just going to turn the gas right down and put the lid on, just like that but leave a little bit. So it can let out some steam. So it can let out some steam, that's right. Now, what I'd like you to do is to chop daddy some parsley. Crunch it up nicely, tuck your fingers in, and take your time. 
Mm. Now my hands have got lots of different flavours. Nice, got all those wonderful flavours. You could almost be French. Mm. Huh? Matilda, sprinkle that on there. Good girl. Nice. Merci beaucoup. Damn. Nice. Now, potatoes. And there's a chicken. I can tell Jack's gonna love this. Is he? Looks delish. Doesn't it? Smells delicious. Look at that. Mm. I could smell that even before you took the lid off. Let's get away, darling. Good job, by the way. Thank you. I can't wait for the others to try it. I hope they love it. This is my ultimate French dinner. Chicken fricassee with sensational herby sauté potatoes and lavender creme caramel.